What's good guys? So, I have a question for you. What do you guys know about cryogenic freezing? You may have heard of it from the Walt Disney legend after he died. Or you may have seen it in shows like Futurama where Fry gets frozen for a thousand years and ends up in the future. But is this thing real? What do cryogenic freezers or chambers look like? And what does it mean to actually be cryogenically frozen? Let me show you. So all cryogenically freezing something means is that you freeze it at a temperature below negative 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold. I mean, that's colder than the 21 Savage song I listened to in the last six years. So, phew, some cold stuff right there. So, like its appearances in pop culture may suggest, cryogenically freezing stuff is very good for long-term storage or maintenance. But you can't freeze humans, at least not yet or not that we know of. However, you can freeze smaller biological samples like bacteria cells or mammalian cells or RNA or DNA. And it works because the temperature that these things are frozen at is so cold that the enzymes that would usually degrade these elements at normal temperature can't function at this temperature range. So you can just keep them there indefinitely for years. And that's why cryogenically freezing stuff has become so powerful. Uh, especially when working with DNA and RNA in recent years. So, while you can't cryogenically freeze humans yet, or not that we know of, you can cryogenically freeze cells that will turn into humans in the future. So, that means that you can cryogenically freeze egg cells and sperm cells and keep them in long storage in these chambers. Or you can even go one step further and cryogenically freeze the zygotes that happen when these two cells meet. Or, one step even further, you can let these zygotes develop and store the embryos in the cryogenic freezer. So, really, you can store human cells pretty far in the development process in cryogenic freezers. So, cryogenic freezing is also very, very clutch for in vitro fertilization. And what that is, is when couples may have trouble con conceiving, they can go to a lab and have the fertilization of the sperm and egg happen in a lab dish and when they mix it around and then uh, create the embryos in a cell culture, they can store these embryos in the cryogenic chamber and preserve them there for as long as they need before maybe choosing a specific embryo to go on with the pregnancy and re-inject it back to the woman. So it's really revolutionizing the way that people can be conceived now and in the future. So this is really some life-changing technology. So to get something so cold that you can store human embryos inside without them degrading is an unbelievable feat. But how do these chambers get so cold? Well, enough of me talking. I'm going to show you. So this big guy right here is a Thermo Fisher Ultra Low Temp Cryogenic Freezer. It costs a cool, cool 23K. Just like a normal refrigerator though, you open it up and you store your sample inside. However, there's a few key differences. You have to store your samples in these long, thin, silver shelves to optimize storage in these machines to make the most of the storing capacity. Because this freezer costs a bag and a half, if I'm being honest. I mean, these samples are paying more than me in rent. <laughs> I mean, for real. The handle is a special locking handle that creates a vacuum seal to prevent anything from entering or leaving the system in order to maintain a very cold and a very constant temperature inside. Therefore, it opens in a very futuristic way, like this. As you can see, it is absolutely frozen in here. And believe me, that initial wave of cold when you first open the chamber hits you like a fridge. To get this cold, this freezer is attached to this liquid nitrogen tank which feeds liquid nitrogen into the freezer chamber. Now for the crazy part. This liquid nitrogen cools the inside of the freezer because it absorbs the heat from the surrounding environment to use this energy to vaporize. And as the liquid vaporizes into gas and expands, the gas pressure decreases, leading to a decrease in temperature, which decreases the temperature inside the chamber. If you don't believe me, Check out the all-time op equation of the ideal gas law to confirm this. Now, 
let's move on to a slightly more bougie model of the cryogenic freezer. This fancy thing right here is a Sterling cryogenic freezer, which costs a whole 33k. It has a similar appearance to the Thermo, but it's 10k more because it uses a more energy efficient method for the long term cooling of samples. Instead of using a complex cascading refrigeration cycle of circulating liquid nitrogen in and out of the freezer to keep it indefinitely cool inside, there is a very, very fancy engine stored on the top of the chamber that can compress and expand the hydrogen or helium gas stored inside. The change in temperature caused by altering the pressure of this gas drives several pistons which circulate the refrigerant throughout the freezing chamber. Since there are far less parts required for the system than for a cascading refrigeration cycle, the Sterling freezer is more energy efficient, easier to maintain, and lasts longer than the Thermo. However, you could buy a Thermo Fisher and a 2015 Honda Civic for the same value, so you tell me which one is really the better value option. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, um, and I hope you guys enjoyed learning about what a cryogenic freezer is and how it works, and if not, let me know of some other wiser ways to spend your 33k than on a big glorified freezer box, am I right? Nah, but actually, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I got some cooler stuff coming out later this week. And stay tuned and stay cool, that's all.